got everybody carrying on with extract three from uh, the global economy. I'm going to skip down through all this stuff we've got already. This file is uh, continuously under progress. Let's see, where did I leave off? All right. I've been through extracts one and two. Extract three, I could probably get through pretty quickly, but it's important to note down all the key concepts you want to grab from extract three. Uh, it focuses primarily on the, I think this one is the easiest extract to address because it's about the cutting of China's economic growth target. So let's start off. In February 2001, the Chinese Prime Minister Wen Jiabao announced that China was to lower its annual economic growth target from 8% to 7% for the next five years. If I'm taking a look at this, first thing I would just highly recommend you know is that they have, okay, why does China have a growth target? Uh, what is meant by a growth target? And why, right, and also just beware and it's reduced from seven, from eight to seven percent. But I think you're going to have this anyway, so you'll have this all in front of you. Some, of, uh, I've got a couple of comments back on a few videos saying that uh, these aren't, these are helpful. They aren't helpful. Uh, somebody said I'm just repeating what's back in the in the case study. Some of you are benefiting from that. Uh, so if you take a look at this one, if you have questions, I'm going to come up with a list of questions for each extract, and I'll post those up after I'm done getting through uh, extract one, two, three, and four. Right, so do pay attention to uh, things I draw your attention to. Like that's mainly what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so let's continue. Each of the six last six years, Chinese economic growth has exceeded the eight percent target set by the government, uh, with growth in 2010 reaching 10.3 percent. Okay, why is exceeding growth targets bad? All right, and they're going to address that in a second. The announcement symbolizes the government's concern with rising inflationary pressures, questions over the sustainability of China's rapid economic growth as well as the extent to which rapid economic growth is capable of promoting a development. All right, so the key things here, the three we want to address, obviously you can see them for yourself, uh, rising inflationary concerns, pressures, sustainability, and development, and its, its relationship with rapid economic growth. All right, we have to figure out one rising infl inflationary pressures where that where they're coming from. I think we've addressed those in the earlier two extracts. Number two, the sustainability. This is really, I'd say, the focus of this uh, extract: the sustainability of rapid economic growth. And if we are looking, if we're experiencing rapid uh, rapid economic growth, how much of that is resulting in development? Right. How much is going to provide and we're going to create for the future or develop our economy? Uh, rather than just be something that happens in the short term. All right, so these issues were raised in a question and answer session between Chinese Prime Minister and Internet users in 2011. Here are the Prime Minister's statements uh, on the, in the online question and answer session. I'm just going to draw your attention to the things that you should be able to discuss, like when you're reading through this, uh, things that would be going into your answers. Uh, ultimately, the fact that they want the fruits of economic growth to benefit the people. Uh, so it meets their material cultural needs and helps increase their standard of living. So let's say uh, shows a focus on the standard of living for people of China and the quality of and their quality of life. Right, the fact that it should benefit the people. We should ask the question: Who is it? Uh, benefiting now? Are the people truly benefiting from this? Second, rapid price rises affected public and social stability. The government has made a priority of keeping prices at the at a generally stable level. Uh, what could happen in terms of public and social stability if inflation continues to spiral? Well, I shouldn't use that word, to rise at a rapid rate. We must no longer sacrifice the, this is quite obvious, right? Uh, this is something you learn all the way in the beginning, Unit 1 Economics. Uh, the, the impact of growth on the environment, that is self-explanatory. Last paragraph, what you really need to take from here is the difference between 
and getting an accurate perception, I want to say, or an accurate portrayal of economic development and whether or not real GDP or increases in real GDP actually measure this. Because in order to promote sustainability, the Chinese government needs to understand the social, environmental, resource, and demographic impacts of growth. So what are these actually? That's a good question to ask. Uh, what are the social, environmental, resource, and demographic impacts of growth? Yeah, so we need to add, we need to ask that question. Um, socially, what's going to happen in terms of growth? You know, are we going to have, do all our, do the people of China benefit? Uh, does the quality of their living, uh, the things they can buy, does their income go up? And environmentally, are we damaging the environment? This is self-explanatory resources. Are we using up that stuff that we have um, that's non-renewable? You know, the things that we're going to just, you know, plow through uh, with all this growth that's occurring and look back in the future and ultimately have sacrificed the needs of the future uh, for the gains of today, right? And the demographic impacts of growth now, this I wanted to look a bit further into because there's a few directions you could take. So I'll, t I'll tell you to hold off on that because I'm going to come back to that when I go through some questions for this, uh, this particular extract. Traditional measures of economic growth, such as the change in real GDP, don't measure these impacts and can give a misleading indication of economic welfare. Uh, the Chinese government may need to turn its attention to adjusted measures of sustainability, such as the Index of Sustainable Economic Welfare, and adopt policies to make develop economic development more sustainable. From this one, Define the ISEW. This is actually, if you have the green textbook, I think it's on page 305 or 306. Uh, there's a definition of this index, and it takes into it adds in, I believe, it adds in those things which enhance the quality of people's life, and it subtracts those things which take away from the, somebody's quality of life. So they'll subtract things like pollution and damage to the environment, uh, and they'll add in those things which provide a greater benefit. Uh, such as education, and I believe healthcare. But do take a closer look at this, right? Don't just take what I'm saying here. This is just a kind of like a guide to get you guys thinking. But the main points to take from this extract will then be uh, why China is looking to slow down economic growth, and in essence, how do they make it sustainable, right? And why might it not currently be? That's the main question you should be taking away from this extract. I want more to go and then we'll get to questions.